Hi, this is Ed Duclo, Tech Content Coach, South Windsor School District. And today we want to take a look at academic integrity and specifically the tools that you as a teacher have um, from when viewing your students' documents. Um, a couple things here before we get started. Number one, I would set your classroom expectations. What do you expect? What do you consider the academic integrity as it pertains to your class? What are the consequences, etc.? And the other thing that I would suggest is that everything that you do or as, almost as much as you possibly can, go through the apps.southwinterschools.org account. If everything stays through the um, uh, G Suite, it's going to be easy to track down where things um, have been, how they got shared, etc. Okay. Um, the one thing you do want to avoid is allowing students to go ahead and um, you know, start to type things in their own personal accounts, maybe on a Word document, and then copy and pasting in. You'll never have an idea where those things came from. Okay, let's take a look at a couple things. First, the more that you can go ahead and send things out through Google Classroom, the easier it's going to be able to uh, keep track of all of this. Um, I just went to this self-evaluation of an initial draft that the yearbook class did. When I go ahead and click on the ones that they returned, you already know this. Everything's right there. I created a document for each of them. Okay, now, if you were in a situation where, you know, you're, you're not even at the due date yet, and you say, well, nobody's turned anything in, can you look at it? Yes, you can. Let me show you what we're talking about. If I go to my drive, and I come down to my drive, and I look for a folder called Classroom, well, number one, I never, I never didn't create this. Google did, okay, in the background, and when I open it up, it's all of my classes, all the assignments, everything is right there. So let's go ahead and take a look at that yearbook assignment. It was a self-evaluation of initial draft. Now when I get in here, everything is right here. Okay, so whether they, because I created it and then shared it out, I am always the owner so I can always take a look at it anywhere during the process. And I think that helps, uh, especially in situations where you, you're starting to consider plagiarism or the sharing is the going on that you didn't really want. Let me just take a look at one. First of all, if I right click on this document here, I can go down to view details. When I view the details, I can see everything that's happened in the timeline. You can see the, the icons, you can see the date, and everything along those lines. So far, everything appears that it's just been between me and the student and everything looks fine. So I get out of this now and I open it up. First of all, if she had shared it with someone, I would be able to see that. Okay, those are the details of that document. Now, when I open it up, excuse me, when I open her document up, here are the things that you want to start to take a look at. All right, most of you are familiar with this, but we won't, I won't assume anything here. So let's take a look at what's already built in with Google Docs. Once it all is up and running, I come over to File. Okay, excuse me, first I would look into Share. When I go to Share here, I take a look and it's with a student in one group. And I say, hold on, shared with a group? Well, if I look at that group, that group is going to be yearbook staff because I created the document and sent it out to the entire class. Okay, no problems. She didn't share it with anybody else. We're set. The other thing I can come in and I can take a look is going to File and then coming down to Version History. Version history allows me to see the version history. And at this point, it doesn't look like there's really much help there. It's like, okay, what does that say? Well, if you come over here, first of all, everything that I did is either in black or blue. Anything that you can see that she did is highlighted. And if I hover, her name pops up as well. There's a little um, uh, arrow right here. And if I click on that, oh, look at this now. I can go back to the very beginning and click on it. And right now, I am seeing almost in real time, 735, she typed in her name and the spread that she was working on. One minute later, she added these things right here, and two minutes later or three minutes later, and you get the idea. So I can start to see how she built this paper. You also notice that in all of these are green icons, excuse me, uh, little green squares green squares that's connected with her name. If she was sharing it this with somebody at a point, I'd see a different color. I like this. I can go back at any time. Actually, there's a lot of reasons why I would use this. I mean, sometimes I don't know about you, but I'm typing up something. And I was like, oh boy, the paper's really gotten away from me. So I can always go back to another version. But here, again, we're talking academic integrity. Here's a way that I can check. If you like this, actually, there is even a, a 
a more um, complete way to actually see the student typing in real time. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but I'll also attach to this the follow-up will be um, DraftBack, which is an app that can actually, once you install it, you'll see this, uh, the student typing in real time. All right, to finish up our thoughts though, the last thing is for you and for our students. I think they need to know that when they're working on a document, actually I'll go with one of my own right now. So I've been working on this document. I don't believe I've shared it with anybody. Let me take a look to see once it gets called up. I come over to the share and I have changed it a little bit. So let me just get out of that and I'm going to go to another document. Okay, this one I've just started work on, private only to me. If I go ahead and open this up and I go to advanced settings, I can add people, okay, and that's going to be part of the revision history, but I also can prevent them, the editors, from changing access or adding new people, meaning they can't go ahead and redefine, like for instance here, they could go ahead and do any of these. If by checking that, that would eliminate that and I can also disable the options to download print and copy for commenters and viewers so if somebody were able to get the hands on this they wouldn't be able to do any of those possibilities um, that's a lot at you real quick I understand that um, please let me know if there's anything I can do to take time and go through it step by step as I said then the follow-up to this will be a draft back uh, a video just on draft back as always let me know how I can help have yourself a great day